Mr. Tappan is being extradited under a treaty between the US and Britain, which means the American prosecutors can demand a suspect is handed over without the evidence ever being tested in a British court. We have an extradition treaty, as you know, between us, and uh, there are certain uh, laws and procedures to be followed. They have been followed in this case. The uh, gravamon of the complaint uh, is uh, based in uh, US law. Protecting a country from terrorism is one of the most important tasks for any government. I feel the, the system has let me down. I think that the Conservative government in particular, and Mr Cameron, um, whilst in opposition, were so fervently against the extradition treaty, and now they're in power, seem to reverse their, their decisions. Yet there are circumstances in which you cannot try them, you cannot detain them, and you cannot deport them. I'm a British citizen. I've lived here all my life. I've paid my taxes, and I've paid a lot of taxes over the years, and I feel I have a right to the protection of the British government, and Mr Cameron, in particular, should take note. But I, as a British citizen, should be treated fairly and not be sent off to a third, what I call a third world country because of their their system that they employ. It is not therefore surprising that some people start asking questions about whether the current arrangements are really sensible. I feel that uh, I don't have any human rights and that's because I'm not a terrorist. If I was a terrorist I'd have more rights but I have none. No one should argue, I would never argue, that you defend our system of rights and our system of freedoms by suspending those rights and those freedoms. It is difficult for me to understand how this has come about because um, I've always been a law-abiding citizen. I've never had any problems with the police. I've had the odd spark, the odd speeding ticket. Uh, but uh, I've had no uh, communication with the police. And this is the first time anything like this has ever happened to me. So. I find it very difficult to come to terms with. I've got a family life here. Uh, my family means everything to me. It'll be an emotional farewell for a period, uh, an indefinite period. We don't know how long it would be, and we're at the mercy of the US authorities. It was early morning when Christopher Tappin left his home in Kent. He's accused of conspiring to sell missile parts to Iran. He says he's been wrongly implicated in an American sting operation. His destination, Heathrow Airport. But before he went into the custody of US Marshals for the flight to the States, he faced the cameras with an attack on the British government. I look to uh, Mr Cameron to look after my rights, and he's failed to do so. I have no rights. Abu Qatada is walking the streets of London today, and we cannot extradite him. We do have a real problem when it comes to foreign nationals who threaten our security. In Britain, we have gone through all reasonable national processes, including painstaking international agreements about how they should be treated, and scrutiny by our own courts, and yet we are still unable to deport them. He has more rights than I have. If I was a terrorist, I wouldn't be going to America. We still cannot fulfill our duty to law-abiding citizens to protect them. This case is the latest to highlight what some claim is the unfair extradition agreement between the UK and the US. A recent review found it was not unbalanced in terms of grounds for extradition, but some politicians disagree. Well, joining me now from our Westminster studio is Nigel Farage, leader of the UK Independence Party and a personal friend of Christopher Tappan, the man extradited today. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, when did you last speak to Mr Tappan? Last night. Um, and can you tell us a bit about that conversation? Well, I rang him and I just said that I hope he has the strength uh, to get through what is going to be a truly ghastly ordeal. Um, these American prisons are pretty brutal places. Um, and he's going to face a situation where he will try and get bail uh, but probably it's going to be refused. And he then faces the nightmare of if he wants to plead not guilty, he'll be told he may spend up to four years in prison before the case is heard. He'll be told that his legal fees could be between one and two million dollars and that if he loses, 
well, it's life imprisonment. And so in the face of that, is it any wonder now that 98% of these cases in America result in guilty plea bargains because you're told, well, it's just two years and it's all over. And I don't think we're sending Mr. Tappin to a just system. Um, I don't think he should have been extradited at all. And for it to have happened with no evidence being produced, frankly, throws away centuries of good legal practice in this country. And even David Blunkett, who was the Home Secretary in 2003, who was part of these negotiations, has now admitted that the treaty is an error and it needs, needs changing very quickly. But can I please make one plea? One plea to the Home Secretary. A, a plea on humanitarian grounds. Could she please contact the US Justice Department and ask them to drop their objection to bail and she can do so on the basis that this 65-year-old man has never been in trouble with the law in this country for the whole of his life and is not the sort of person that's going to go and run away. Can she please, please do that and at least then he won't be held in some awful prison? Yet a, a senior judge looked at the extradition law uh, just last year, there was a review of it, and found no problems with the balance between the United States and the UK. But what you're saying is that there is a need for another review to clear up any perception or otherwise that it's one-sided. We should not be extraditing anyone anywhere unless a judge in this country can have some evidence put before him and, and thereby make a decision whether there is a case to be answered. Furthermore, Mr. Tappin didn't go to America um, and do something that the authorities think is a crime. He was operating his shipping business from Surrey, and if there is any evidence to be heard, I, I very much doubt it, but if there is any evidence to be heard, then I would have thought it entirely appropriate that that evidence could be heard in this country. Because the other problem he's got is that none of his witnesses are prepared to go to America to testify for him. They're so terrified of what might happen to them. Okay, Nigel Farage, thank you very much. Since the Act came into force in 2004, the UK has made 57 extradition requests to the United States and 40 people have been returned here. The US has made 134 requests to the UK and so far 75 people have been dispatched to America. Uh, <coughs> a lot of trepidation, not sure what's going to happen. Um, worried, uh, but... Uh, at the airport, the golf club president was asked what he was taking with him. I've got a couple of autobiographies, Jeremy Clarkson and Seve Ballesteros. And then a question for his wife, Elaine. Uh, I don't think my wife would like to answer any questions. He'll be remanded in custody over the weekend, so he'll go straight to a local jail and he'll appear at court on Monday where he can make a bail application. Um, that bail application will probably be adjourned for three days, which I understand is normal procedure in America. So the earliest Mr. Tapping can expect to be granted bail is on Thursday. Um, so he will be in custody until Thursday at the very best. And I mean, right now, is he, I don't know, wearing an orange jumpsuit like we see in the film? Well, he will be put in an orange jumpsuit, yes, and he will also be handcuffed. How do you think he is feeling and how is his wife feeling as well? Um, they were pretty devastated this morning. They said their goodbyes this morning. Uh, it was very upsetting. Um, he's tried to remain strong, I think, for his wife. I'm not sure it's really sunk in for him what is happening to him. I think he just really can't quite comprehend it all. And is it fair what's happening to him? No, it's not fair. He's been sent over there. He hasn't seen one shred of evidence of what the, ev the case is against him, as is all people who are extradited to America under this ridiculous treaty that we have with the States. And as far as his next step, um, you know, it's a very uncertain future. What, what do you think will happen to him? What are the lawyers there saying? And what, and what would be your advice to him? 98% um, of people in America enter into a plea agreement. That's because people can't afford to, to defend the case. They also, um, the odds are stacked against you in terms of the disproportionate sentence you get if you plead not guilty, then are found guilty. And thirdly, the repatriation um, of, the of a client depends on the attitude of the US prosecutor. So if Mr. Tappin does not enter into a plea agreement and is found guilty, he would have to serve the whole sentence in America, which may actually effectively be the rest of his life, rather than serving a sentence in the UK. Therefore, I think it's very, very likely that he will enter into a plea agreement. I think it's a shame, it's a disgrace that the Conservative government, whilst in opposition, promised to reform the law 
and they failed to do so. And they've let me down, they've let you down, they've let the whole country down. And then he prepared to board the plane. The Home Office says the Home Secretary considered all the relevant matters before she signed the extradition warrant. Christopher Tappan is now on his way to the United States. June Kelly, BBC News. No decent country should deport people if they're going to be tortured.